Hello again. I'm on my way to Maine this morning. Well, I'm on my way toward Maine this morning. Because Maine is about a 16 to 18 hour drive from where I live. And I'm not going to make it all the way there today. I'm going to visit my friend Matt in Maine. I'm going to stay at his place for a while. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to do some exploring while he's at work. It's going to be a good time. Originally, I had big plans to see specific things and to take a very specific route on my way there. Uh, but that all fell through. So now, for the most part, I am just going to see what happens. I'm going to see what happens as I go. I'm going to see how far I make it today. I'm going to see if there's anything on the way that looks interesting to me. If I see things, I'm going to stop. I'm going to check them out, and we'll see where I end up at the end of the day. I'm about six hours into my drive, and right now I'm just enjoying the scenery. As I drive north, it's like spring is rewinding. Uh, it's almost, it almost looks like summer at home right now, but as I drive, the, the color in the trees gets lighter, more like that early spring lime green color, and the maples have that blush and the blossoms have been returned to the trees. That might be the closest we can come to time travel. And uh, right now I am on I-90 heading toward Pennsylvania. Still in Ohio, but I should be out of it a little after noon here. sitting in traffic somewhere in Pennsylvania right now. I haven't moved in a few minutes. Not what I wanted. Let's go check out Niagara Falls. I didn't do any research, so I have no idea where to get the best view. There is a lot of water going over there, though. The water level seems really high. on the bridge over the falls seeing if I can get a better view from the other side over here it's very windy today so there's a lot of mist it's hard to see the falls
Niagara Falls is behind me. I'm driving east again. Let's see if I can get maybe another 100 miles or so before I call it a night. It's already getting dark, which is strange. It's chilly, it's dark, and I'm getting a little bit tired too. I've been I've been driving for most of the day so far. Most of my 12-hour day so far. I might do a hotel tonight. I'm not really sure. Uh, I was planning on... Camping was the plan, but if I don't camp, that's okay. I have time to camp on the way home. And the way home is going to be a better time to do it anyway. So, I might start looking for a hotel. As long as I can find something for cheap, because I'm cheap. I don't like to spend very much for a hotel that I'm going to spend eight hours in. Makes sense to me. The toll on the toll road. They have really nice rest stops on I-90 in New York. I guess those tolls are going towards something good. They're sure as hell not going towards the road. This is a really bumpy stretch of highway. <laughs> But I guess the nice service centers help make up for it. And while I was in there, I, uh, I booked a hotel room. I found a cheap hotel room that's about five miles away. Uh, it's a lot more convenient than camping anyway. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're at a Super 8 in, uh, near Rochester, New York. I think Henrietta is technically where we are. Where I am. I don't know why I keep saying we. You and me together. It's not a particularly nice hotel. <laughs> it is uh, pretty much the $66 hotel room that I paid for. We've got some stains on the floor. We've got some wallpaper peeling. Hallways smell like cigarettes. My kind of place. It's a beautiful morning here in the Finger Lakes region of New York. It's bright and cool and crisp and it's spring. Maine is my destination today. I'm gonna go through Massachusetts and up through New Hampshire to get there. At some point today, we should be seeing the ocean and uh, who knows what else we'll see. Now let's find out. I just crossed the Massachusetts border and I stopped for lunch. Just finished that up out of the box of food that I have in the back. I like the feeling of having everything that I need with me in my back seat. I could survive pretty much indefinitely on what I have with me right now. I like the idea of just traveling, going where I please, stopping when I please, seeing whatever stopping to see whatever catches my eye and spending the night wherever I need to. If I need to hike, I can do that. I can hike up into the mountains and survive right now with what I have. I can survive basically any weather, any terrain, any conditions. Man, would that be a life. I like to read travel and nature writing. One of the big themes in that sort of writing is that these interstate highways with 70 and 80 mile an hour speed limits are uh, kind of an impoverished way to travel. They're 
boring. They don't let you see all of the unique local flavor of the places you're passing through. You go you go through too fast to appreciate anything. That's that's kind of the that's the argument. And I agree with those things. But I have to say that if not for these interstate highways, I would never get to see parts of the country like this. Because I don't have endless time and endless money to travel those back roads and to see all those little towns. I would love to do that. Maybe someday I will. But right now, these highways are my best shot at seeing something that's a thousand miles away from home. I mean, I'm 900 miles away from home right now. And I got here in a day and a half. And I've seen things along the way. That would never happen if I had to crawl along on those back roads. And to tell you the truth, I don't really mind being on these highways. I don't mind seeing the country like this. I like watching the countryside pass by and watching it gradually change. And a car beats a cubicle on a Tuesday afternoon any day. I've been seeing a lot of kettle ponds created by glaciers. So I decided to stop at a famous kettle pond, Walden Pond. I'm on the trail right now to Thoreau's cabin site. I needed to get out and walk a couple miles and feel the sun. And this is a good place to do it. It's only a little bit out of my way. I have plenty of time today. Matt's still at work. I'm actually only a few hours away from his place right now. I'm making good time for once in my life. my thought from earlier about the interstate, I like to discover things in different scales. So I like to have those large scale trips where you travel thousands of miles 
but I also like the medium scale trips where you go explore some town or some region or some national park. And I also enjoy the really small scale stuff where you just walk a couple miles in the woods and you stop every couple minutes to turn over a rock or to take a picture of a flower or to sit down and listen to the bird song or sit at the edge of the water and listen to it laughing for a while. I like all of those things and I, I, I wouldn't want to limit myself to only one of them. I made it to Maine. I'm here, finally. I took all day to get here, but I'm here. And I did get to see the ocean. I did catch a glimpse. Probably the only glimpse I'm going to get of it. Because I'm running out of daylight, and I'm also hungry. Um, I'm probably going to stop and get some food somewhere. Uh, but really, I'm less than two hours away from Matt's. It's weird, all the restaurants are closed. The uh, part of that rest stop is closed. I guess things aren't really going on on a Tuesday evening out here in May. Yes, that was an authentic Maine Popeye's chicken sandwich you just saw. I got that at one of those lovely turnpike service stations, which I went to because all of the local restaurants are closed tonight for reasons that are unknown to me. But I am less than an hour away from Matt's house now as the sun sets on day two. cold wind blowing too when I open those windows. We're almost there. Good night, if I don't talk to you soon. This is my first full day in Maine. Right now I'm standing in a lake that's about a 10 minute walk from Matt's front door. Not a bad way to spend an evening. There's a pair of loons out there. I can't remember the name of the lake. I'll try to figure it out. Now today we've just been relaxing for the most part. I'm tired today. so. I'm uh, kind of recharging after two days of being on the road. This morning we, uh, we watched some movies. We went out to lunch with his girlfriend. He showed me around town, so I saw Winthrop, which is where I am right now. Matt lives in Winthrop. I saw that. Uh, we drove through Augusta, and then we drove over to Waterville for lunch. And since then, we've just been relaxing. He showed me around here. He took me to the local library. I always have to check out the local libraries because apparently I just can't stay away from the library. 
<clears throat> even when I'm on vacation. I have more plans for the next few days. Today I'm happy just to be doing this. On my second day in Maine, Matt and I took a trip to the Portland area. First, we visited Fort Williams Park, just south of the city. There we saw the Portland Head Lighthouse, which was commissioned by George Washington. We walked through the six batteries within the park, each of which was manned at some point during World War I and II. And we saw the ruins of the Goddard Mansion, which once housed soldiers who were stationed at the fort. After that, we went to the Portland waterfront, which is one of Matt's favorite places in Portland. We wandered the streets for a little while, and then we ate lunch at the Portland Lobster Company. I ate a lobster roll, and we drank a couple beers while listening to the music. Soon after that, it was time for Matt to be back at work, so I was on my own once again. Here I am at Capitol Park in Augusta. This is the state capital of Maine, as you might be able to tell by that Capitol dome behind me. I don't think I have ever seen a state capital so deserted. There's nobody here. It's very weird. And I know it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a gloomy Thursday evening. You can still expect there to be a few people around. Climbing Tumble Down Mountain. This kind of has classic stupid idea written all over it. I'm alone. The weather's not great. It's kind of chilly. It's kind of rainy. It's kind of windy. I think there's snow up there. The bugs are bad. The trail's wet. There's nobody around. I'm not even sure that this road that I came in on is technically open yet for the season. But I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I want to climb a damn mountain while I'm out here. I came to this Mount Blue State Park area partially because it's the area that uh, the book I'm reading takes place in. I'm reading uh, the book A Year in the Maine Woods by Bert Heinrich, and his cabin was very close to here. It's looking more and more like winter the farther up I go. This trail is mostly just straight uphill and it's full of rocks and it's full of melt water. So my feet are wet. I don't mind this little misty rain if that's all it does. I don't really want to be caught up here in a thunderstorm. Asked some people that told me it's very cold up there. They looked cold. They were all layered up. I'm down to my t-shirt. I'm getting hot on the way up. Slowly took off my layers and I think as I as I near the top I'm gonna slowly put them back on. I hope to reach the summit but I for sure want to reach the tarn. It's a purple trillium. Every spring I really like to get out and see the ephemeral wildflowers, which are the ones that don't last very long. They only come out for a week or so at a time in the spring before the canopy leaves out and they don't get any sun anymore. And I always really like seeing the trilliums. 
amongst other things. But that's one of my favorites. I was very uh, anxious to get out and see them this spring. And then I came down with some kind of really bad sinus infection and had a fever for days. I had to stay inside for about a week. And by the time I got back out in the woods to where the trilliums are, they had already wilted. And I was a little bit disappointed. You know, no major tragedy or anything, but just one of those little disappointments in life. Little did I know that uh, a couple weeks later, I'd be basically traveling back in time as I came north and gained elevation. And now it's early spring again. And here are the trilliums. Like I was saying earlier, that's probably the closest we're ever gonna get to traveling back in time. And I feel like seeing those trilliums is just a little gift for all my struggles against time. Time is always just such an enemy of mine. But just this once, I was granted this little moment of grace. That makes everything I've done today worthwhile. Now that the sun is out, maybe you can see the flecks of mica reflecting the sunlight in these stones. It's like there's diamond dust in the trail. It's really neat. I hope you can see it. That's the trail behind me. That is what is yet to come. This trail's a workout, that's for sure. And this is the fastest, shortest way up this mountain. This is the way without the ladders. This is definitely a chunk of Maine right here. Somewhere in there is the trail. It's not really a trail. It's just a tumble of rocks and gnarled roots and water. Look at that, above the tree line. We got snow. Look at that. Does that make it worth it or what? Oh. Lake down there. I'm above the tarn now. Yeah, this is the trail here. Here's some Memorial Day snow for you. I'm almost at the West Peak now. It's slippery and it's deep and I'm tired. But I couldn't get this close without doing it. This is 
Mountain, the west peak of Tumbledown Mountain. Made it. Just in time to see the sun come out again and dapple that valley. Unbelievable view. This is the best hike I've done in a long time. A lot of cool stuff in this rock, this granite. Like these quartz veins, lots of glacial striations, all that mica. Very interesting rocks. That water down there looks delicious. I'm gonna go down and drink some. It turned out to be such a beautiful day in the woods. I'm really glad I didn't give up on this because the weather looked bad. Gorgeous evening. If I'm not mistaken, I think Mount Tumbledown is that one right there. I think that's where I was standing a couple hours ago. I slept in the next day and then spent some time reading and relaxing by the lake. By midday, though, I was ready for another walk. Matt joined me this time, and we went to Androscoggin Riverlands State Park. We spent a few hours hiking the trails there. We saw the ruins of old homesteads and many primitive stone walls, and we had nice views of the Androscoggin River. It was the warmest day of the trip, but still nothing compared to the heat and humidity at home. Since it was my last night in Maine, we went out for a good meal in Augusta at a restaurant called Kume. I had steak teriyaki. Then we went back and finished our samurai movie marathon that we'd started the first night I was there. I fell asleep that night to the cries of a loon through the open window. Well, I'm heading west through the state of Maine right now. I've spent my last night in Maine on this trip. I've been here for five nights. I've been staying with Matt the whole time. And I would just like to thank Matt again for his hospitality. It's been a really good time. We've gone out for a walk. We've gone out for dinner. We've just hung out at his place and we've uh, had some good conversations, watched some movies, drank some beer, drank some bourbon. It's been really nice. It's been a great five days. I would love to do it again. Uh, but now it's time for me to start heading home. I won't be there for another couple days because I've got some stuff to see still. Today we are headed toward Mount Washington. Uh, see Mount Washington and then I have a campsite reserved 
in Vermont, somewhere near Lake Champlain. So that's where I'm going to end the night. And, uh, and tomorrow, we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I've reached the White Mountain region of New Hampshire. This is a part of the state I've never been in before. I'm glad I'm here now. I don't get tired of looking at mountains like this. stopped here near the base of Mount Washington. My GPS says that there's about 13 miles to go, but it's going to take me an hour to do it. It's probably right. The weather doesn't look very good, but this is a kind of mountain that, that affects the weather, so who knows what it's going to be like up there. Uh, there's definitely some white up there in these white mountains. Driving up Mount Washington, about a mile and a half, somewhere a little above 2,000 feet. There's already snow. Temperature's already dropped about five degrees from the bottom. It's very narrow. Here we are at the two mile mark. There's a whole, a whole page full of rules for how you're supposed to drive this. Uh, I'm a little nervous about it actually. made it to the top. <laughs> My palms are sweaty. That was kind of a scary drive. Of course, up here at the top, you can't see anything. Uh, there's a cloud on top of the mountain right now. Very windy, of course. This is the windiest part of the country. In fact, I think this, I think the highest winds ever recorded in the whole world are here.
There's a big chunk of the presidential range right there. I think Mount Washington is that one. That's where I was. There's more of it over there. Uh, I think you can see Mount Jefferson over there. small towns that I was talking about on my way out to Maine. Um, seeing lots of little places. Passing by farms and little general stores and old churches and old schools and old libraries. and Seeing kids playing in yards. It is kind of a nice change from the scenery that I had on the interstate. south of Burlington. So on my left I can see the Green Mountains and on the right I can see Lake Champlain and beyond that the mountains in New York kind of fading into the haze. Lake Champlain. I made it to my campground. I'm at the uh, DAR State Park Campground on Lake Champlain in Vermont, just outside of New York. New York is over there. Uh, the campground's okay. It's a you know it's a state park campground, about what you would expect for that, but can't beat the location. I'll take this. I'm just glad that I got a, a campsite at all tonight. I was afraid that this being the day before Memorial Day, I was going to have all, all kinds of trouble finding a spot to camp tonight, but I reserved this this morning, sight unseen, and uh, considering those circumstances, it's a pretty good spot. I'm hungry now. I gotta go back to camp and make some ramen. And I'll probably go to bed early. I'm tired. I'm starting to feel it on the way here. I'm starting to feel my reflexes uh, kind of failing and not being as sharp as they should be to be driving. So uh, hopefully a good night's sleep tonight. Because I got a long day of driving ahead of me tomorrow.
Good morning. I had to have at least one tent night while I was out here. It was a good tent night, too. Perfect night for being in a tent. It was cool, but not cold. There was a nice breeze. No rain, low humidity. Frogs singing last night, birds singing this morning. The only problem was that there was a group of noisy people. Of course, there's always one. I'm inside the ruins of the British fort at Crown Point from the uh, mid 1700s, 1759, I think. Is was this begun? Quite a bit of it left. This is the officers' barracks, I believe. Really cool. There's actually the remains of at least two forts here. There's an older French fort, uh, mostly just crumbled black walls now, just piles of rubble all over the place. And I think there was an American fort here at one point, too. Good place to spend the morning. I have the place almost to myself, even though it's Memorial Day. I think there'll be more people around. Like all the places I visited, I could have spent a lot more time at Crown Point, but I was happy with my morning among the ruins, just like I was happy with the way I spent my time on the rest of the trip. It was eight days well lived. Before leaving, I watched the cars passing over the Lake Champlain Bridge, and I caught the smell of water on the breeze. It was time to go home. There were still two days of driving ahead of me, and another night in a New York hotel, but Crown Point was my last major stop of the trip. back to Kentucky. I made it through the terrible traffic of Cincinnati and I'm back in Kentucky. So this journey of uh, about 2,500 miles is about to come to an end. And I just want to thank you for sticking around, putting up with me this whole time. And I also want to thank Matt for being such a good host in Maine for five nights. It's been a good time. Let's do this again. What a disaster. summer again. Try not to twist my ankle on the way down. Yeah, this is the trail here. Oh, shit. I think Cincinnati has some of the worst traffic in the country. It's, the, it's been the only bad traffic in the whole trip. When I left, Cincinnati was terrible. When I'm getting home, Cincinnati's terrible. Uh, and it doesn't matter what time of day, it doesn't matter what time of the week, it doesn't matter what time of the year, every time it's terrible. I don't think I've ever just driven through Cincinnati, ever. And I've been through it many times. And it's not even going trying to get downtown or anything, well, that's pretty bad too, it's just trying to get through it. It's just terrible. I'd rather drive in Washington DC again. Stop. Stop recording. End recording.
cut. 